REI in the water, if not only do we need to uh, redo that uh, for discussion now, but I would just make a motion that we approve the uh, draft record. Motion to make and I have a second. Second. Any discussion? Not that all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed passed. That concludes buildings and grounds and uh, construction management oversight we did not meet. Thank you. Student life. Can you comment on agenda item number eight, the water? The, the member, sure. Um, just a general comment, I would. Well, yeah, I mean, this is something where when, when um, UConn's been trying to work on had water, first of all, with conservation and, and, and sustainability here at the university for the, eight, for the last eight years I've been here, and I think we've come a long way toward coming up with a plan that will uh, sustain the university for the next 50 years while also being very conscious of our uh, conserving water to is a very pre precious resource but it's a very big day for the university and for Mansfield and we're very happy we worked with the town of Mansfield to uh, to get this done thank you okay why was that the best option uh, it was environmentally sound and financially the best the best approach but, uh, all the three options that were here. can you give us the bullet points of the plan sure. how it will work and the cost and all that uh, the Connecticut water option is essentially to provide water from the Shenipset Reservoir, which is up in the town of Ellington area. It would run an additional five miles of pipe from its current terminus up here to the campus. Uh, over the over time, they would make additional improvements to add treatment capacity to their uh, treatment facility in Rockville, uh, and then some additional pumping capacity that they need to be able to serve the We expect it will take about three years to complete the process to bring water to stores. And how does the university get its water now? University runs its own water supply system. We have groundwater, uh, groundwater wells adjacent to uh, streams, uh, local streams that are in the Atlantic River. And how will this improve the supply? Improve uh, infrastructure? What? How does this make any difference? It's well, it's it, it's kind of uh, another step. The university has done a lot of work on conserving water. We use about a quarter million gallons of less water today than we did uh, in 2005, even though we're serving 2,000 more people and we have a, a larger infrastructure than we had at that point in time. We could serve water pretty well. Uh, we just added a reclaimed water facility that's taking uh, and treating water from our uh, wastewater system and using that to feed the uh, cogeneration plant here. Uh, so that takes about a on a warm day, about 400,000 gallons of demand off the system. This piece over the long haul allows us to ensure we have an adequate margin of safety, gives us flexibility in terms of how we operate our system in terms of if, if we have dry conditions, being able to shut down as we do right now the fentanyl, uh, the fentanyl fields. And then allows for us an opportunity for growth with uh, Next Gen and the tech part of the town of Mansfield has some growth aspirations on it as well. How important is water supply to the town's future? It's important. It's very important. Why is it important? Uh, well, the uh, water is, you need water, you know, not only to basically uh, serve the population, but also buildings rely on the water. Uh, several of the buildings that we have here uh, have high technology associated with that. For example, lasers and things like that. They demand, you know, they demand water in terms of being able to do business. And you know, there's a lot of controversy about the MTC's proposal uh, to bring water from the western part of the state. Were there any parts of that plan that turned out to be practical or any problems with that? Event? Well, the key, uh, you know, distance, distance drives a lot of decision on something like this. Um, it's the longest pipeline around uh, either of the two routes that they were looking at. And uh, so therefore they presented the most potential conflict with the state plan of conservation as well. And newly adopted in, in, in June. And they also pre presented the most opportunity for reduced development along the way. Um, so that were, those were key factors in evaluating the environmental and environmental related merits associated with this. Um, you know, and financially, uh, it's a significant. It's a significantly more expensive capital cost. 
Um, and the expectation would be that the university would somehow finance the improvement associated with that. And then uh, their business approach would have been to have the university uh, engage, enter into a take or so called take or pay contract. And uh, that's standard in the industry. Um, but it basically puts uh, the university in a position where uh, it has to pay for what it uses. And, you know, if you look at the planning period uh, that we're looking at in the 50 year horizon, all this, all this demand is going to materialize over time. It's not going to be there immediately. So, where you set that limit and how much exposure you have is a critical. It's critical in terms of deciding, and it's also critical in terms of what you're going to do.